Welcome. We have a great event to start with uh, this day. Somewhere it's morning, somewhere it's afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us at this six uh, global media monitoring launch event. We are starting shortly, so we are waiting for a couple more minutes for uh, other people to join. We had a lot of interest, so um, be sure to familiarize with your uh, many options and uh, speak to you again in a couple of seconds. Welcome everybody, we are set to go. And um, today we are going to reflect on what we see in the media. Uh, how does it reflect on who we are in these societies? Um, does the con content uh, they produce reflect who we are? How gender sensitive it is? What the role of women in this content is? And let us kick, uh, uh, kick off this event by uh, checking how your chat function works and also reflecting a bit on what you have seen probably this morning already or a few days ago um, in the media. So think about um, a news item um, that you um, probably read um, or watched on the TV and um, ask you, um, yourself one question. How does gender representation in the media work now? In your chat, please find your chat, um, write one, if you read, saw, heard something in the media that pleasantly surprised you. This can happen, so choose one then and write it. Um, write two, if you read, saw, or heard something that left you maybe shocked or disappointed. And you are also welcome to provide some examples of these experiences. So we give you a few moments to reflect and make your choice in the chat. Um, yeah, I see lots of twos 
uh, in the chat, which means you were left shocked or disappointed, or maybe so something that you were really not agreeing with. Um, if you feel uh, your examples, uh, your examples uh, can be shared, please do that. We will also have a look at them. Uh, for example, I see here, uh, here, we have seen girl getting pregnant and no media reports. What, what does this mean? I don't know, but it's probably about gender sensitive language. It's about the role um, women are portrayed in and many other uh, questions that we can ask ourselves when seeing these type of headlines. When it comes to um, why data is important, it's because the media plays an important role in promoting gender equality. This is the view that Free Press Unlimited shares that uh, our panelists share. We hope to have a, an interesting discussion on their view on the current gender media monitoring data. And um, we also would like to see how well familiar you are with the global gender media monitoring project. Um, we would like to introduce our first poll to make stock of who we are. We will give a few more seconds to answer the questions and then we are going to see what the answers are. Okay, so we can see that um, we have attracted audiences that are keen to know more about gender media monitoring data. There are 20% of attendees present. Um, that we have also media practitioners, journalists who use the data in their work. Uh, we use GMMP regular in advocacy work as well. Fair percentage, 13% of the attendees is doing that. And that you have been a part of the GMMP monitoring team at least once. That's actually quite um, optimistic. Um, it gives me optimism because it's nearly 40% of all the people present and having been a vol volunteer myself in the last media monitoring cycle, I'm very happy to see that. And we also have those who both use the uh, gender media monitoring data in their advocacy work and participate in GMMP monitoring. That's also quite impressive, 26%. Well, that's great. Um, so that means that the, um, uh, the critical questions that the data that is collected presents, um, they uh, tend to have enough importance among the audiences to be addressed. Um, and personally, um, I was really waiting for the results of the sixth uh, global gender media monitoring report to see how we are doing. Um, what is the progress? Have we? made any progress? Do we need any changes? If we need any changes, what uh, kind of changes are there? How can we uh, implement them? And what is the most uh, efficient way to do that? And most um, important is, can we see what we are in the media? Um, can we make sure that through the media we can achieve uh, more fair equitable future for all genders in our societies. 
um, without further ado, I would like to um, invite Sara Machuria, who is the global GMMP coordinator, who had the titanic work um, uh, with managing the last year's uh, GMMP uh, monitoring cycle, which was um, peculiar in many, in many um, ways, uh, including the global health crisis uh, that we had, which um, also um, instigated um, a number um, of, yeah, another epidemic, actually, the gender-based violence epidemic. Um, so I'm inviting Sarah to introduce us to the well-expected data. The floor is yours, Sarah. Thank you very much, uh, Larissa, and thank you to everyone for uh, attending this session. Um, I will share my video. Uh, Okay, so the Global Media Monitoring Project, or the GMMP, for the benefit of those who are new to it, takes the pulse of gender in news content once every five years since 1995. Now, it, is, uh, it was initiated at a conference uh, in 1994 where participants felt that it was important to organize a worldwide monitoring of news media to understand where women were. Uh, that is women's presence, their representation, and their participation in news content in comparison to men. The first monitoring took place in January of 1995, and the most recent one uh, last year in September, uh, and this is the subject of this report. The data collected allow us to understand and compare change over time in various dimensions of content from a gender equality perspective. We gather the evidence on the people in the news, the roles they play in the news, uh, how they are portrayed, the journalists in the stories, and the quality of content from a gender perspective. Now, the 2020 GMMP uh, had a part uh, participation from 116 teams around the world who monitored over 30,000 stories published uh, or disseminated in uh, print, radio, televi uh, radio, television, news websites, and news Twitter feeds um, around the world. The teams were trained to apply the same methodology, the same data collection tools on the same day uh, around the world. To ensure comparability of results across time, the GMMP's 1995 uh, classic variables have remained intact, even as new ones are integrated, informed by changes in the news media landscape. Uh, statistical calculations also allow us to uh, make predictions on the time it will take the global gender equality gap in news content, which leads us to the next poll. And the question is, I think that the findings, it's a statement, I think that the findings will show that gender equality in the news will be achieved. Vote what, uh, which of these choices you think is most accurate. Okay, we can see the results. Interesting, by 2051, that's the highest vote. All things remaining equal, it will take at least a further 67 years to close the average gender equality gap in traditional news media. For the first time since 2010, there appears to be a slight upward movement in the proportion of stories that clearly, uh, in the proportion of stories uh, that have women as subjects and sources. This change may only be a slight percent point, but it is nevertheless statistically significant and edges the needle uh, one point in the right direction, halfway to equality. 
In no region has gender equality been achieved in subjects and sources or the people in the stories. The gap between women and men in terms of their presence in new stories, in traditional outlets, and by traditional I mean print, television, and radio, ranges from 18% with Greenland on one pole to 88% in Guyana. At the regional level, North American news media are the best performers, and the Middle East and North Africa are the poorest. European news media have made the most significant progress on this indicator since 1995, and Pacific region media in the past five years. Only Africa's media have stagnated as the rest of the regions have improved by three to 12 uh, points across the quarter century. The proportion of women as subjects and sources in digital news stories on news websites and news media tweets combined also increased one point between uh, 2015 to 2020. But on Twitter alone, we saw a three point fall in the past five years in women's presence as subjects and sources. Just a quarter of the stories uh, that were coded uh, on the Global Monitoring Day in September last year uh, were related to COVID-19. In fact, the overwhelming majority of science and health news was related to COVID, just over 60%. Not only did this topic's share of the news space increase considerably, men's visibility as persons in this set of stories rose as well, at the same time as women's visibility declined. Consistent with historical patterns, women are still least likely to appear in political stories in traditional outlets and digital outlets as well. Over the past 25 years, the greatest improvement has been in stories uh, on the economy, as we can see in this uh, table at the bottom. This chart depicts the lowest presence of women being in politics and the highest in stories on social and legal issues. In 81% of the participating countries, the monitors coded other characteristics of the people in the news. For example, their race, their religion, uh, whether they had a disability, uh, their immigration status, whether they were refugees or uh, immigrants. Comparison of the GMMP findings against physical world statistics indicates that women are underrepresented across all the identity groups. In Latin America, for example, only 3% of the people in the news are from indigenous or tribal groups, and of this, only one in five is a woman. While other statistics, world statistics, tell us that in the physical world, indigenous people are estimated to be at least 8% of the region's population, and women are at least one half of this 8%. In recent years, numerous initiatives to source women for expert opinion have sprouted across the globe, and media organizations are visibly making effort to diversify their pool of experts. We see a dramatic rise as experts uh, from 19% five years ago to 24% currently. Women's voice as spokespersons has also increased. It has risen by eight points since 2005. Uh, but in keeping with historical patterns, women are still most likely uh, to appear uh, in an, an exceptional roles as personal experience providers, uh, as popular opinion providers, both in traditional and in digital news. The GMMP documents the gender of news personnel to the extent that they are visible through bylines, that they are heard and seen in broadcast and digital content. The gender gap across countries varies from minus 44% to 92%, where women are severely uh, underrepresented. And when uh, the, the minus 44% here means means that uh, there are they are more women than men uh, reporting the stories. And in 92%, only 8% of the stories are reported by women. Uh, 
from the colors here, there is quite a variation when we look at specific countries, but at the global level, the disparities are less prominent. At the global level, performance was stagnant at, 30, at 37% for uh, women as they appear uh, in the role of reporter. Uh, from 2005 to 2015 in the proportion of stories that were reported by women. Finally, finally, we see a three-point rise since 2005 from 30, uh, since 2000, yeah, so uh, we are now at 40%, meaning that four in 10 stories are in traditional news media are reported by women. And online, it's actually not that different. Online, 42% of journalists who are named in news articles seen or heard in multimedia clips are women. The news reporter gender gap is exactly the same in Asia, in Asia, in Latin America, Latin America and Europe, despite variations in the pace of change. Uh, here we see in Asia 41%, Europe 41%, and uh, uh, Europe 41%. Pacific media have progressed slower than the rest of the regions. And we see that uh, by the bars here at the end. Uh, but they are currently the second best performers after their Caribbean counterparts. A comparison between print and digital newspapers reveals that stories by women reporters are distributed more or less evenly across the major topics in online and offline sources, as those by men are skewed towards politics and government. In fact, 62% uh, of the web published newspapers monitored do not have a print version, meaning that the similarities seen across platforms, digital and traditional, are not completely attributable to a republication of print papers in the digital space. Historically, political journalism has had the most severe reporter gender disparity, and we see this evidenced in the results. Nevertheless, we are seeing a noticeable change in the proportion of political news uh, reported by women for the first time since 2005. In the Caribbean, Middle East, and Pacific, at least 50% of political news are reported by women. While in Africa, uh, Africa lags behind significantly with only two in 10 stories on politics reported by women. So this leads us to the next poll. And the poll is on a scale of one to five. The statement reads, I think that the findings, stories by women are more likely to have gender balance than stories by men. Vote on a scale of one to five from strongly disagree to strongly agree. Can we see the results? So 43% of us agree with this statement. And we are right. Journalists may not consciously consider gender an important criterion for source selection. But the GMMP findings across time indicate that women reporters are more likely than men to turn to women for interviews. In 2015, the results suggested that the gender source selection gap was narrowing. But in the 2020 wave, the gap has more than doubled to reach seven points from only 3% five years ago. There is a consistent five to seven point gap between women and men reporters on female source selection in all regions except for the Caribbean, where men reporters are almost as likely as their women colleagues to select female sources. This pattern is repeated on digital news platforms where there is a nine point gap in gender source selection. 
online, women are 34% of stories in stories by women reporters compared to 25% in stories by men reporters. Now here, this is uh, three points higher for women online reporters and one point higher for men online reporters. The quality of news journalism from a gender perspective has not improved. Stagnation and decline are consistent across the quality measures and common across regions and major topics at the global level. Women are less likely to feature centrally in the story now than 10, 20 years ago. Most stories today raise uh, gender uh, inequality issues than 15 years ago, albeit two points fewer than in 2015. News stories are as unlikely to clearly challenge gender stereotypes today as they were 15 years ago. So in the report, one innovation in this GMMP is the calculation of country performance scores based on the recently created GEM index. The GEM index is a composite measure of the level of gender equality in news media content. It is calculated from six key GMMP indicators and the explanation is in the report. In the report, we have scores for nations that took part uh, in 2020. Also in the report, our analysis of the gender dimensions in pandemic news compared to news not about COVID-19. We look at what has changed in the Me Too era, specifically on stories about sexual harassment, rape, and various forms of gender-based violence against women. There are also numerous country results tables uh, similar to uh, previous reports. As well, the report contains uh, a discussion on the methodology and the limitations. The report is available online on this link and uh, look forward to the discussion. Thank you very much, Sarah, for the new data, for this reflection of one day in the global media. Um, I'm not going to provide any opinions because we have great experts to join um, the panel. Um, Karen Ross, um, who is Professor of Gender and Media at Newcastle University and also GMMP European and uh, UK coordinator is one of our panelists. Um, Sandra Lopez Astudillo, uh, expert in gender and media and also the coordinator of uh, Fundacion Gamma and coordinator uh, of GMP project for Latin America and Ecuador is joining this panel. And uh, Moten Rayo Alaka, she is um, executive director and CEO of the Wale Sayinka Center for Investigative Journalism. You can read uh, full bios in the chat. Uh, please feel free uh, to um, post your questions in the Q&A while you are listening to the discussion. We will try to address as many questions as possible and um, do this in Q&A. If you have any questions about technicalities, uh, go to chat. So let us reflect a bit on the data that Sarah um, shared with us. Uh, when you saw, the, heard her, what was the biggest surprise maybe? Or <laughs> um, maybe um, it was not surprising for you in some extent uh, when it comes to the data of the latest report. I open the floor for all panelists. I'm happy to start. I think one of the surprises, um, both globally and for the European data, was how relatively few COVID stories uh, there were, I think 25%, 26%. And given how important it's been how overwhelming it's been that was uh, that was a real surprise to me as well as that surprise i mean again the other kind of covid related uh, surprise was how how little visibility there was for women health professionals and certainly here in the uk women have been quite visible as because health is an area which um, does actually attract uh, women 
and they do manage to get to senior positions. So that was that was kind of quite surprising. And the, the last thing that I think was quite surprising, well, maybe it's not that surprising. And um, having been involved in GMMP from the very beginning, what I think is interesting is looking at the regional differences because it, it's, it's one thing to actually see global trends and that's really interesting and it's part of the, the, the massive strength of something like GMMP that it is a longitudinal study and it is global. But I think what's interesting is when you drill down to look at the different regional variations to see both the similarities between those uh, different regions and the, the differences. And I think that's, again, is the strength of, of looking at, at, at something like GMMP, because you get both those perspectives, you get the, the global and the regional and indeed the national. And looking at the, the similarities and the differences, I think, is really valuable when we're thinking about this, the issue of gender inequality in the media. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, COVID-19, with 75% of the global healthcare being women and such a massive underrepresentation in all these stories, that's really a way um, to, um, yeah, an issue to work on for news media, uh, but also um, for us as audiences to reflect on. Um, Sandra Motenraya, um, what were your impressions of the data? Motenraya, please. Thank you, Larissa. Um, so for me, I, I had um, a couple of feelings, um, surprise, um, but um, also other feelings too. So first with the surprise, I was surprised to find that um, the digital media, especially Twitter, um, the, that's the uh, representation of women um, on that platform reduced because um, digital is a space that is um, elastic. And you know it can take more content, it can take more things. So to find that um, even on that platform, then women, um, information about women, women as leading voices went down, is um, is a surprise to me. I I can think through it though. I can think through the fact that you know what goes on Twitter, for instance, is selected from what uh, from the bigger stories that the news media have. So it means that at the point of that selection, women are even then, you know, not um, really uh, paid attention to, and somebody um, actually decides to leave out some stories, quite the number of stories of women who appeared in the main um, publication and did not tweet about those issues, which uh, is worrisome because also the people in charge of digital media in many media houses, uh, quite a number of them are young people. So it tells us that uh, even for the generation next, uh, we have issues that we have to, to deal with. Um, so that, that came to me as a surprise. Um, the other feeling that I had though was, um, was sadness. Sadness about um, how global the issue we're dealing with here today is, how um, it is widespread wherever you are, in the world and how it is real. One of the things we found out in the surveys that we have done at the Wally Shenka Center for Investigative Journalism on the representation of women in the Nigerian media and you know on um, expert voices is is um, the fact the fact the fact that uh, women's uh, voices are reduced um, and editors are not aware of of what it is. They are not conscious of the fact that they are not including the voices of women. So that, that's sad to see that it is global. What's sadder for me as somebody who comes from Africa is the fact that uh, Africa is what was it in the statistics that we have, even though it's, it's not a surprise because uh, what happens is that when there's a crisis uh, situation, then women are even further marginalized. So Africa is dealing with a lot of developmental issues, as we all know. And of course, uh, then women get worse hit in such situations. The last thing that I feel, though, is a lot of hope. Uh, hope um, the journey seems very long, 67 years is a lot, is a lot. But uh, one of the things that are clear to us is that we're dealing with a deeply cultural issue here. So to have a terminal date a bit far in mind is, is something to look forward to because this is deeply cultural. People hold their 
to um, the inequalities in the representation of the sexes. And it is hopeful for me that, uh, well, things are moving slowly, but they are moving because uh, one of the things we must do is celebrate the successes that we have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sandra, what are your reflections on the data? Muchas gracias. Buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Primeramente, eh, decirles que para mí es un honor ser parte de este evento y saludarles a nombre de Gama desde el Ecuador. Bueno, entrando en el tema, después del estancamiento que se observó entre el 2010 y 2015, teníamos mucha expectativa en conocer qué había sucedido y habíamos hecho muchos esfuerzos globales en el marco del Objetivo J de Beijing. Notar que ha subido un punto en el promedio global dos puntos en radio y televisión, la representación de, de mujeres en las noticias y saber que se mantiene la tendencia prevista en el índice de medición de género en los medios, para nosotras es un elemento importante y hay que resaltarlo porque eh, a pesar de que el avance es lento, continuamos, continuamos avanzando. Entonces eso es una muestra de que el cambio en los medios de comunicación es posible. Un segundo elemento que quisiera resaltar es el incremento de mujeres en función de expertas y eh, ser presentadas, eh, tal como ya mencionaba eh, Karen, ser presentadas como especialistas de salud en temas sobre COVID, eh, presentadas como expertas en temas de ciencia y salud en noticias relacionadas con la pandemia, eh, da cuenta de un incremento del cinco, de cinco puntos desde el año 2015. Y por supuesto, esto es un dato que se tiene que reconocer y valorar. Un elemento de preocupación, por otra parte, es la bajísima representación de la población en situación de vulnerabilidad. Un 1% de representación de personas de LGBTI, por ejemplo. Un 3% de representación de población indígena o de pueblos eh, ancestrales en la región de Latinoamérica es un dato alarmante. El GMMP 2020, cuando ha integrado este análisis interseccional, nos deja una gran constatación y un gran desafío para la visibilidad, para la puesta sobre la, la mesa del debate en los medios de comunicación de todo este conjunto de poblaciones. Y los datos evidencian además eh, que sumado a la baja representación global de las mujeres en las noticias, cuando se incorporan elementos sobre diversidad eh, de sexo y género, diversidad étnica, situación migratoria o edad, las mujeres se encuentran nuevamente subrepresentadas, lo que las coloca en una posición de mayor vulnerabilidad y de falta de acceso al ejercicio pleno de sus derechos. De hecho, en la región de Latinoamérica, el GMMP muestra a más mujeres que hombres hasta los 18 años, por ejemplo. Luego, menos mujeres que hombres en los siguientes rangos de edad, hasta casi desaparecer a partir de los 65 años. Por lo tanto, hay mucho que hacer en ese sentido y el GMMP es un gran aporte. Um, thank you very much, Sandra. You have... Um... Uh, brought up important issues of intersectionality within uh, uh, the gender equality, gender sensitivity of news uh, uh, and media sector in general. So I think we have to look at the newsrooms themselves, um, uh, but also at the content and also um, the way they treat, so to say, in the content, different sources, different um, people in their stories, what roles they play, uh, are we visible, are we not? And um, it's good to um, know actually that many teams at the national level decided to add their own additional questions um, that they felt were important to address during this monitoring cycle. Um, and uh, for Latin America, you, uh, for Ecuador, you already mentioned that for you, it was important to see how visible LGBTQI people are, indigenous people. Um, is there maybe anything else that um, other panelists would like to um, add to this inter intersectionality? Um, does it become a buzzword or is it really something that we need to do? Just a few words. If I can just say something, I think that it's, it's really crucial that we find ways to monitor um, marginalized communities, however communities are marginalized. I think that the challenge for us um, is, is how to identify marginalized communities, because I, in, in, the, in the UK, we asked a question around 
uh, minority ethnic status. Now, sometimes that's obvious because it's visible for us in, in the UK where we have a white majority, but sometimes identities are not visible. So I think the challenge really is trying to capture, I, mean, I think as, as Sandra is saying, we didn't look at, at LGBT, we didn't look at, at, at issues around sexuality in the UK, um, because it's, unless it's actually mentioned in the, in the story, it's, it's not always clear. So I think, you know, finding ways to capture that data, I think is really important. And I think that what we saw this year for, uh, for GMMP 2020 is an effort to try and do that. You know, we've, we've tried in the past to look at things like age, but again, unless age is specifically mentioned in a story or you happen to know a particular broadcaster is a particular age, this all has to be done by eye. And if you imagine the huge number of volunteer coders around the world, we might, depending on who we are and how old we are, might actually determine whether or not we, how we imagine the age of other people. So I think that's really challenging, but it's really crucial because you know, we can't, what we know is it's not simply about gender. You know, when we're looking at, at marginal, marginalization and invisibly, invisibilizing communities, it's gender and, it's women and, it's all these other things. So we, what, we, what we know see from the report is the double, the multiple discriminations, the multiple invisibilities, the more that you veer from the norm of you know, the, the typical news subject, which is you know, the, the man, the, the, you know, the, the non-disabled, likely heterosexual man. So the more that you're not that person, the more invisible you become. And we need to challenge that. Thank you. Um, and when it comes to progress, um, yet another very disappointing figure, 67 years. Do we have time to wait that long? Not all of us will see the changes. That's disappointing. So what can we do to change the situation? Uh, practical tips uh, from your experience, from successful stories uh, and anecdotes and uh, your work. Um, some were mentioned already. Uh, women ex expert base, uh, bases um, um, developed uh, in different regions on different continents. And it's good that uh, editors have a place to go to when they're looking for a woman expert. What else can we do to improve the data and in five years get the results that we will be happy with? Who would like to start? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, so, so um, what I always first say is that when we want to change this situation, imagine that we're in a room that is dark and we are all talking about the fact that there is no, there is no power, there is no light. Well, eventually, people would have somebody would have to get up to put on that light, and then there will be light. Um, I know that there are lots of efforts uh, to change things. Um, generally, globally, in countries, but we need to be more intentional about these efforts. We need to think more about between now and 2025, 2020 and 2025, when the GMMP report will come out. What intentional steps are we going to take to make the changes? And we need to make intentional steps. So one of the things that we need to do is educate the media. A lot of times we assume that the media is educated because it is the media and it is the one that informs us. But the media is only as good as its sources. And what we have found in our work at the Wallisha Inca Center for Investigative Journalism is that a lot of times the media does not know, the media is not aware of some of those issues or people who handle this are not conscious of the need to mainstream gender, to the need to mainstream girls and women into stories. So we do need to educate the media. We also need to engage with the media leadership. And we have done that a lot and we've seen changes. We have gone with data that are specific to media houses and media generally in Nigeria. And we've gone to sit with management of media organization and put their own figures to them, tell them that their editorial board has no female person. And if the media, it's supposed to be an organization that prescribes to the rest of us how we must live, then the media must lead 
the change which is asking of society. So we, we challenge the media with its own figures and tell it to reflect. And we talk about this in terms of the ethics of the media, in terms of professionalism of media, in terms of the fact that if media includes more women, it becomes more sustainable for, for, for all to use. Also, we need to educate the female persons that are in leadership already. Um, a lot of research has shown that the fact that a woman is in a leadership position does not necessarily mean that the plight of women changes as a reason of her position. A lot of times the gap is understanding, capacity of the person to know what they can do with their power. So we need to educate. And um, I will end by saying we do need to collaborate more. So this is a fantastic thing. I also know that the Gates Foundation did something on the missing perspectives of women in news. You know, there are lots of great efforts globally that are happening. We need to coordinate and collaborate more so that we can, in our different spaces, make more influences, share ideas, learn from one another, and influence one another so that we can shorten the years from 67 to something that is closer to what we see while we are alive. Absolutely. Thank you, Motoraya. Um, education, empowerment, um, addressing the issues at the core. That's great. Uh, Sandra, would you like to add more tips? Claro que sí. Muchas gracias. Realmente tenemos un, un gran camino todavía para avanzar y tenemos la fortaleza, además, eh, del, de, como contraparte por todo el, el gran activismo, el movimiento de mujeres y todas las experiencias eh, que se han venido desarrollando ya. Entonces yo creo que tenemos eh, toda la oportunidad para continuar, si bien puede sonar un poco pesimista la predicción de, de los 67 años que necesitamos, yo creo que, que, podemos, hacer, que podemos hacer aportes. Eh, por un lado... Eh, quisiera plantear que la experiencia ha mostrado que las acciones de movilización ciudadana son muy potentes, sobre todo si es que van acompañadas de procesos de alfabetización sobre la narrativa mediática con perspectiva de género. Esta movilización ciudadana presiona y sobre todo motiva a los medios de comunicación para que actúen acorde al marco internacional de los derechos humanos y particularmente de los derechos de las mujeres. Ese, ese sería eh, un, un elemento, ¿no? la, la movilización ciudadana. La otra cuestión es que la situación de las mujeres eh, efectivamente empeoró con la pandemia por COVID-19 y consecuentemente las noticias en los medios de comunicación durante el GMMP reafirman y dan cuenta de esta situación, del refuerzo de esta discriminación cuando abordan la pandemia. Así es que nos parece que es urgente generar acciones de sensibilización, fortalecer las campañas permanentes y lograr la complicidad de los medios, eh, lograr involucrarnos más con los entornos digitales, las redes, para lograr el compromiso de toda la sociedad en la prevención de violencia de género, en la visibilización de la discriminación y en la valoración también de la presencia de las mujeres y la generación de oportunidades en todos los campos. Y en este sentido, el ligado a lo que había planteado anteriormente sobre la, la presencia de, la, de las mujeres en función de personas expertas, eh, vemos que las mujeres expertas en, en Latinoamérica son princip principalmente políticas o parlamentarias en cuanto a su rol. Y vemos que los hombres expertos son básicamente académicos o docentes. Yo creo que este resultado eh, puede estar evidenciando impactos eh, de las políticas de igualdad en la región. Así es que seguir en la búsqueda de acciones en el marco del principio de la democracia paritaria eh, buscar asimismo la alianza con los medios de comunicación para la difusión de la normativa en cuanto a la democracia paritaria, me parece que puede ser otro tema eh, para avanzar en el futuro. Eh, eh, un último hecho que quisiera resaltar es que eh, las mujeres periodistas cubren más que los hombres en su misma posición noticias sobre COVID y noticias relacionadas con ciencia y salud. Entonces, no es solamente que subió el número de mujeres expertas, sino que además las mujeres periodistas cubren también más los temas de ciencia y salud. Si juntamos 
estos dos elementos, eh, podemos encontrar nuevamente un elemento de, de oportunidad, quizás una actualización global eh, de la base de mujeres expertas en todos los campos para ser compartida, difundida, eh, reforzada en los medios de comunicación para que se incluyan estas voces. Y finalmente, eh, no quiero terminar eh, esta, esta participación sin agradecer enorme e infinitamente a los equipos voluntarios y de coordinación de los países de América Latina del GMMP. Asimismo, agradecer a la directora del proyecto, Sara Macharia, por su alto compromiso, por su acompañamiento humano, profesional y también a todas las personas que han hecho posible llevar adelante este GMMP 2020 en un tiempo tan difícil y tan delicado. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Sandra. Um, yeah, activism, political engagement, um, uh, adherence to human rights, these are big issues, but when uh, media has a role to play, it can also be very effective. And it can be also a double-edged sword, I think. It can either reproduce gender inequality or actually shatter um, inequalities and uh, disrupt uh, the uh, misrepresentation that we observe. Um, I'm extremely thankful for your insights. Uh, we are running out of time, but I still would like to address some questions that uh, we have received from the audience. Many uh, of the questions have been answered uh, during uh, uh, your uh, contribution, uh, during the panel, um, but um, there are still a few that we might want to have a look at. Mm. Um, the, um, the gender inclusive language. Why do we need it? How do we educate um, news media about that? And um, maybe uh, in connection to that, education of young media professionals, so those who are future journalists, what can we do about getting them ready um, for the task that we are facing? Could, could I answer that? Um, I think that, that serious, one of the kind of key issues is around training uh, journalism students, um, as well as kind of young media professionals. And, and certainly I put in the chat uh, a couple of examples of good practice, because one of the things I think that we do need to try and avoid is, you know, reinventing the wheel. There are a number of good practices out there. And myself and uh, some other colleagues were involved in uh, developing a website called a Jemmy, which again I've put in the chat. There's lots of examples of good, of good practices on that website. We've also got a number of uh, training activities, learning units, one of which just thinking about what you've just asked Lar Larissa about gender inclusive language. So you know, there, there is lots of stuff out there. A number of organizations, including for example, the International Federation of Journalists, European Institute for Gender Equality, have got lexicons, vocabularies, you know, ways in which to talk about issues around gender, gender awareness, you know, violence against women. So we don't have to reinvent these things. What we need is to connect the dots between what exists and what we don't know exists. And so part of, you know, part of the effort, part of what we're doing, I think, in, on this call is connecting with each other and understanding what's already going on. For example, the BBC's 50-50 uh, equality project, which is looking at having 50-50 women and men sources in, in, in their uh, productions. So again, that's a really good model that could be taken up by any other broadcaster. So I think those, those trying to understand what already exists, what resources are already out there, that's a key task for all of us because even though we're communicators, we often don't communicate particularly well. And I think one of the main um, absences or difficulties of communication is communicating between education and research and the very profession, the very sector of, of society which really could, could learn from that, which is kind of the, the, the media sector. So trying to connect those dots, I think is really crucial as we are doing today. Thank you so much. Yo quisiera you know, agregar to... quizás un, un elemento muy cortito en cuanto al lenguaje. En el caso del español, el uso, de, el uso del lenguaje inclusivo, el uso del lenguaje que nos nombre a las mujeres, el uso del lenguaje que nombre a todas las diversidades, es realmente un imperativo. Y eh, justamente el informe de Latinoamérica está 
eh, presentado con este intento, eh, de manera que no se, que no se, ofu, que no se tape, eh, digamos, la posibilidad de nombrarnos a todas las personas. Es necesario hablar en masculino, en femenino y en el lenguaje eh, de las diversidades, ¿no? Para que todas las personas nos sintamos representadas. Y yo creo que, es, que no es difícil hacerlo, que podemos comenzar. Y les invito a, a observar los informes de, de Latinoamérica y para las personas que están necesitando tener más detalles ya, contarles que, que estamos ya con los informes disponibles en la página web. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Uh, Sandra and uh, Sarah. Yes, I would also point out that in the global report there's an annex that brings together all these uh, resources and good practices uh, that are available for journalists. So instead of reinventing the wheel, as Karen said, uh, let's let's go to the report and and find some of the good, really good ones. Thank you for this edition, Sarah. And also just do it, start self-monitoring, start educating yourself. It's a process, we are all in it. Start using the new language, which might um, uh, sound a bit weird in the beginning, but which would recognize a person in your story. Um, so um, I'm really thankful for all the attendees from um, across the globe who joined this panel, for all the uh, knowledge uh, that you have shared with us collectively. I hope that uh, we will be able to um, uh, arrange more sessions like this. In any case, this event is also a start of um, events of the national reports launches. So please follow the updates, um, get uh, in contact with your uh, country coordinators and go there and be there and ask critical questions also to the media. Um, we, we, we will, of course, share the link to the latest report, which you can absolutely use uh, for the next, next five years and also think, what can I do today and tomorrow to improve the data I don't like to see? And um, as, as a final goodbye, um, to reflect on the data and the discussion we have, uh, we also would like to introduce a video highlighting the data that is reflected in this report. By no means, stay in touch. Subscribe to our um, press releases, to our stories, and um, contact us. And thank you all. Have a nice day and gender sensitive future. Thank you.